Medicosis perfect snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Continuing our nephrology playlist. In the last videos, we talked about pre-renal azotemia and intra-renal azotemia. Today, we'll talk about the post-renal azotemia, yet another cause of acute kidney failure when your kidney function is toast. The kidney is important because it gets rid of waste products from your body. Without your kidney, all of these waste products will end up accumulating in your blood, which is not good. In the urine, there is oliguria. In the blood, there is uremia, hypercreatinemia, and azotemia. And in chronic kidney failure, which will be a topic for a subsequent video, we will add anemia and hyperuricemia and hypocalcemia. Please watch the videos in my nephrology playlist in order, as well as these specific videos from my lab's playlist. Let's keep it simple. Back to basics. Here's computer science. There's an input, processing unit, followed by an output. What's the input to the kidney? Renal artery. What's the processing unit? The kidney itself. And what's the output? Ureter, bladder, urethra. Which means if the problem is here, less blood is reaching the kidney, it's called pre-renal renal failure or pre-renal kidney injury or pre-renal azotemia. If the problem started in the kidney itself, it's called intrarenal azotemia. But if the problem started after the kidney, i.e. in the ureter, bladder, urethra, etc., it's called post-renal kidney injury. Your kidney has gazillion functions, one of which is to get rid of waste products like urea and creatinine. And that's why kidney failure is not fun, because it's the job of the kidney to get rid of the urea by excreting it into the urine. But if the kidney has failed, what's going to happen? Urea will pile up in your blood because the kidney cannot excrete it anymore and this is called uremia and since urea is made of nitrogen and the word for nitrogen is azot we call this disease azotemia acute renal failure is the same as acute kidney injury is the same as acute renal insufficiency or acute renal azotemia why acute? Because there is a rapid deterioration of kidney function within days or weeks. Why do you call it injury? Because for the most part, it is reversible. We compared between acute renal failure and chronic renal failure in the previous video. Please pause and review. Remember that acute kidney injury could be pre-renal, intra-renal, or post-renal. If my kidney is toast, serum creatinine will go up because there is no one to excrete it. And my serum blood urea nitrogen will also go up because there is no one to excrete it. What's the normal BUN level in the blood? Less than 18 milligrams per deciliter. And what's the normal creatinine in the blood? Less than 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. Let's say that the average serum BUN is 15 and the average serum creatinine is 1. If I do the BUN to creatinine ratio, 15 to 1 or 15 over 1, you get 15. Also remember that the BUN is partially reabsorbed because the kidney needs that urea to concentrate the urine. So some of that urea is reabsorbed back from the tubule to the interstitium. But serum creatinine is total waste. We gotta excrete it. If BUN is 15 and creatinine is 1, then the ratio is 15 or higher. A normal kidney should reabsorb urea, but not creatinine. That's why the ratio is higher than 1, and that's why the higher, the better. If I have kidney failure, I have accumulation of urea in the blood, uremia. Lots of these waste products are acidic, uremic acidosis. Urea is made of nitrogen, azotemia. GFR is toast, urine volume is toast, BUN and creatinine are high in the blood, which means low in the urine. When my kidney fails, all of these toxins accumulate in the blood, adding to the unmeasured anions. See what happens to the unmeasured anions here? They increased. And therefore, the anion gap, which is the difference between the unmeasured anions and unmeasured cations, or this lovely square right here, will enlarge. And you call this high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Acute kidney injury, three causes, three stages. Three causes, pre-renal, intra-renal, and post-renal. Which one is the most common? Pre-renal for sure. Let's talk about intra-renal. What's the cause? Could be a problem in the glomerulus, could be a problem in the tubule, or could be a problem in the interstitium. 
and sometimes the problem is in the renal vessels. But I just wanted to keep everything in three. And then what are the causes of tubular diseases here? Hypoxic or toxic? I'm not receiving enough blood or I'm being hammered by a freaking toxin, which could be a drug, a heavy metal, or a radio contrast dye. As for the three stages, they are initiation, maintenance, and recovery. What makes a good kidney good? That the serum BON is normal, kept below 18. Serum creatinine is normal, kept below 1.2. BON to creatinine ratio is kept above 15. A good kidney does not waste sodium in the urine. Sodium is precious for your body. So the fractional excretion of sodium should be less than 1%. A good kidney is not wasting sodium in the urine. So the urine sodium is less than 20 milli equivalents per liter. A good kidney is capable of con concentrating the urine, so the urine osmolarity is high, greater than 15, and the urine volume should be between 1 and 2 liters per day, for sure higher than 500 milliliters per day. Now let's talk about pre-renal azotemia, I'm not receiving enough oxygen because I'm not receiving enough blood, versus renal azotemia, I am not receiving enough blood, hypoxic, or I'm being hammered by a toxin toxic. Post-renal, usually caused by an obstruction of the outflow. Oh, by the way, you can download these doozy handwritten notes on my website. It's a gentle reminder that acute kidney injury might have oliguria, less than 400 or less than 500 ml of urine per day. It could even be anuria, no urine, but it doesn't have to. Some people have acute kidney injury with normal urine volume, believe it or not. All of that gunk is piling up in my blood. Sepsis or septic shock is a common cause. Hypovolemic shock is another common cause. Pre-renal, renal or post-renal. Pre-renal, blame the renal artery for not bringing enough blood to the kidney. Post-renal, blame the outflow tracts for not draining the urine from the kidney. And intrarenal, blame the glomerulus or the tubule or the interstitium or the renal vessels. How about post-renal azotemia? It's an obstruction after the kidney. Problem in the outflow of the urine from the kidney. For this to happen, you gotta affect both sides. It has to be bilateral. What if I have a stone only in my right ureter? Well, this is bad, but it's not gonna lead to renal failure because your left kidney is fine. But if you want kidney failure, you gotta affect both sides. Or you can affect one side only if you are living with one kidney only. Examples of the obstructions, stones, maybe a stone in the kidney, the ureter, the urethra, strictures or adhesions in the ureters or the urethra. Then we have cervical cancer in females and benign prosthetic hyperplasia in males. Both of these conditions will constrict the urethra and decrease the outflow. How about bladder cancer? How about retroperitoneal disease like retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy or retroperitoneal fibrosis? Of course, they can lead to outflow obstruction. Early on, the kidney itself is fine, giving you the features of a good kidney. But later, if this is not corrected, the kidney will be bad. When the kidney is struggling like this, it will appear swollen yet pale, especially in the cortex because the cortex contains the proximal convoluted tubules, the most active tubules in your kidney. Postrenal azotemia again, back pressure because of the outflow obstruction. The obstruction could be anatomical, like a stone, stricture, etc., or could be physiological or functional, such as a bladder that does not want to contract, neurogenic bladder, which can happen in spinal cord injury, tertiary syphilis, diabetes mellitus, especially if it's chronic, poorly controlled for a long period of time, and many other neurological conditions. What else? Bilateral renal vein thrombosis, because the renal vein is an outflow of the kidney. If it's obstructed, back pressure, the kidney will be toasted. And multiple myeloma, if it is severe enough to cause tons of Benz Jones proteins to be in the urine, and these light chains will Will obstruct the outflow. Symptoms are the same as pre-renal or intrarenal azotemia, fatigue, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, and pruritus, dirt in my eyes, I'm thirsty, I am dizzy, and I fainted. 
What are the signs of a uremia? Toxic facies, uremic skin frosting, the chalky white deposits, pericardial friction rub, painless pericarditis, petechia purpura ecchymosis because the high uremia interferes with platelet function by inhibiting the platelet receptor known as GP2B3A, which is responsible for platelet aggregation. When the platelets cannot aggregate, you get primary hemostasis defect, petechia purpura ecchymoses. Petechia are the smallest, followed by purpura, and the largest are ecchymoses. Early on, it's a good kidney. BON to creatinine ratio is normal, above 15. Fractional excretion of sodium is normal, less than 1%. Urine osmolality is normal, above 500. But later, when the back pressure destroys the kidney, the kidney will be bad as if it's intrarenal azotemia, as we have discussed in the last video. BUN to creatinine ratio is poor, FE and A exceeds 2%. And urine osmolality is low because the kidney cannot concentrate the urine anymore. Management. Treat the underlying cause. If it's a stone, remove it. Insert a catheter. Treat the BPH or the cervical cancer. When everything hits the fan, dialysis. Do you want to learn about the interesting phenomena known as low implantation of the ureter and more urological conditions? Download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about the counter current multiplier and counter current exchanger, the story of titratable acidity, how the proximal tubule handles fluid, download my renal physiology course. To learn more about the osmolar gap of the serum and the anion gap, gap of the serum and urine, download my acid-base imbalance course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To watch all of my 300 plus premium videos right here, right now on YouTube, click the join button and join the highest tier. Subscribe, hit the bell, support the channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.